<laughs> you have publicly said on Twitter many times in opposition to Gary Black's thesis that Tesla will sell 20 million cars by 2030. And he says, mm -hmm. you're out of your mind for thinking that. Mm -hmm. What's the, can you break that down? How do we get to, because I know we only sell 87 million worldwide every year. How do we get to 20 mm -hmm. million just for Tesla by 2030? Sure. No, I appreciate that question. Uh, I've thought about this a lot. And I, the way I view it is, is twofold. One, I don't think Tesla needs as many factories as one would think to reach the 20 million production per year, mm -hmm. especially with the compact car in production. And two is that Tesla and Elon, uh, back to the previous point that was made earlier, is that they look five to 10 years out, they make a prediction, and holy shit, are they pretty good at nailing it. And so the biggest one I use is go back to 2014 and read and listen to Elon Musk and Tesla talking about reaching half a million units per year by the end of 2020 in 2014 without Gigafactory in Nevada even breaking ground. And people are like, you are a fucking idiot. You don't even have the batteries, you dumbass. What are you talking about? And then 2020, 499,000 cars sold, right? And then you take that guy and then you put what, what he said, say with SpaceX, which is a completely different company, but it's a manufacturing company. We're gonna have rockets to land themselves and it's gonna blow your mind and it's going to bring the cost of shooting stuff up into space to like a, 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 a tenth in the long term with Starship and whatever else, right? You're an idiot, physically impossible, dumbest person alive. And then for the last year, they've recovered like 200 boosters or something crazy, right? I, I forget how many they've recovered, but they've recovered, I think the 200th booster was recovered today. Um, so in the last couple of years. So that should say something. But from, a, from an actual uh, numbers perspective, so you think about what Tesla has built out right now. They have Fremont, they have Shanghai, they have Berlin, they have Austin, right? Those are the four that are built out right now. And what about Nevada? Have, is there one in Nevada? I mean, Nevada's Nev Nevada is like batteries, right? But, oh. but I'm thinking about car production. Like the, okay. the, 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 the battery production side of it is kind of tied to the, to the manufacturing process as well. But yes, they also have Nevada and they also have New York. Like everybody forgets yeah. about New York. I forget about New York all the time. That's where they do the solar manufacturing and all that stuff. So, so they have six, but four of them are car specific. These four, uh, uh, these four, uh, factories, but really think of it more as land areas. Um, Fremont's probably capped at like 650. Shanghai, long term, will do 2 million. They're doing 1 million right now. They're expanding the facility to do 1.5, and they have enough land to get to 2. Berlin will probably get to 1 at uh, full capacity. They, they're doing half a milli, and they're going to uh, expand to 1. And then Texas is giant. I don't know. They have so much land down here. Uh, Gigafactory. <laughs> I, had to, I, had to, so, I had to, guys. I had to. Yeah, of course. Sure. No problem at all. Bing, bing, that's bing, that's bing, 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 what is she's Yeah, she's, she definitely did say that. As far as I was like, um, what fucking podcast did I come on today? No, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. If I was in the middle of math, I would have made a, a worse joke, but you have me. No, when Farzad looks right up, you're about to get some knowledge. Bro. You notice that? <laughs> he looks you up, he's like, question, I'm about to fucking kill You ask him a question, right and he's like, um, bam. And then Nuevo Leon in Mexico, right? That's another facility that's going live and that's been openly slated to do 2 million units per year so so austin and nuevo leon is is 4 million together shanghai full ramp is six berlin is seven right and then fremont gets us kind of close to eight ish right but like seven between seven and eight million right now line capacity secured all they have to do is uh, throw up a building all they have to do but that's what tesla's good at they throw up buildings and so with the compact car, the factories that they're going to be building are going to be, uh, they're going to do two things, right? They're going to sh shorten the amount of space that's required to build the car, like square footage wise. And they're also going to try to pump basically twice as many units through that same square footage. So it essentially, it's like a 4X factor on a factory, right? So conservatively speaking, every new factory that Tesla announces after Mexico is a 2 million car per year factory, conservatively speaking, okay? And so if we're at eight-ish now, and there are seven years left to 2030, all Tesla really has to do is announce one factory per year, and they get to 20 million, right? Now, 
there could be a situation where at the end of 2030, there are not enough battery uh, materials or raw materials secured, or the supply chain isn't fully built out to do 20 million, and they might do 15 million. They might even do 13 million. But 2031, you're not that far away from 20 million. 2032, you're hitting 20 million, right? So, far as so let's, that, say you win, let's say you win the supply yeah. argument. Is there the demand for 20 million cars by 2030? You think the demand's yeah. no issue? That's a great question. So here's how I think about that. So what does an electric vehicle do, fundamentally speaking? What is it? So this is how do you guys think about electric vehicles? What do they do per mile? Right. They lower the cost. Right. They lower the cost per mile of an electric vehicle. So the Model 3 right now, a call it a $40,000 vehicle with and then you add in the EV tax rate and all that stuff. Basically, it, it gets the cost per mile to be very similar to a Camry. Rivaling a, uh, rivaling a Toyota in certain states, right? In seven years' time, you're going to have a compact car that's probably going to start at uh, $25,000 ish per year. And then if you sit down and do the math, you do the math for a call it a 60 year loan on uh, the car at like 6% interest. You add in the EV tax credit in certain areas, it you add in tax Tesla credit insurance. Credit. They might not have tax. Um, they might have been sure. I think it's I think it's going until sure. 2030. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, shit. OK. Then. Yeah. But but my point is, is that the cost per mile of an EV is going to be drastically lower than uh, the average gas car. And as you have uh, developing nations coming online in Africa and Asia and South America, and you have more and more people willing to adopt this technology over time, I'm quite confident that there will be more than enough demand for 20 million Teslas per year because the average cost per mile of those cars are probably going to be half of what they are today. And with the car market, this is a very well-known thing. When you're going down the, the price, the, thank you, Smack. <laughs> I appreciate you, brother. Uh, when you're going down the, the cost curve on, on the car market, it's an exponential growth. So for every $5,000, you know, if you if ARC had a chart or something, like when you go from 35 to, to 25,000, you go from like, 40% TAM to like 80% TAM. 80% of the so, market is below 30, $32,000, yeah. 80%. Exactly. Or something like that. Exactly. And you just keep going down, down the cost curve. You know, what else could Tesla offer in seven mm -hmm. years' time as the cost of raw materials go down, the battery materials go down? And then you're, we're not even talking about the self driving portion of it, right? If That's you have true. a self driving thing mm -hmm. with the car where the car's driving itself, what's stopping somebody from hailing a car that's going to be cheaper? than uh, a Toyota Corolla per mile, vastly cheaper than a Toyota Corolla per mile, and you have a private chauffeur and you get to be driven around in private. How is that not going to be the, like, the only way people get around? Why wouldn't that be the only way people get around? You pay less than a Corolla per mile and you literally get driven around in a nice car. Why wouldn't people buy that So well, or well, use it? I have a question. I mean, just to, uh, before we sort of finish, uh, uh, are you only buying, do you still buy Tesla stock? That's one. And what is your other, what is there another bet that you have that's happening that we don't know about? Like, because you seem obviously like you're all in Tesla and there's nothing else, but there's yeah. gotta and, be something and, else. And third, would you, have you disclosed your average? Have you disclosed the position size or that stuff you kind of keep to yourself? No, I, I'd keep it to myself. Yeah, okay. I keep Better. that stuff to myself. But can My you answer the questions me. I asked Lee, uh, about if there's yeah, something sure. else? Okay. Yeah, so the last time I bought was 21, 2021. Um, I wish I bought earlier this year. But I just, unfortunately, I, I, I couldn't. We, you know, we have a certain lifestyle set up, and my dumbass didn't set aside enough to buy more Tesla, and so that was my lesson learned. So I'm Are like, okay, so don't go on vacation all the time. <laughs> I try to be. Uh, so, so that's one. So 21 was the last time I bought Tesla, and then, uh, sorry, what was the other question? Oh, the other big bet well, that I have. Do you have anything else? Is your whole portfolio 99.9 percent Tesla? Or he, wants to know how, he wants to know how much Palantir yeah. you're holding. How much Unphase are you Zero. holding? That's, that's what Zero. Zero. How much Bitcoin <laughs> are you holding? Uh, I'm, I'm actually so in my stock portfolio, I'm 100 percent Tesla, and then I'm holding, I, I think, so, somewhere around 10,000 of, of Bitcoin, maybe a little bit more. I mean, um, so 100 percent Tesla. Bitcoin. That's it. 100 percent Tesla. Yeah. Please tell me your yeah. wife has some uh, VOO or VTI. <laughs> No, 401k, <laughs> IRA, everything's Tesla. Yeah. Wow. Normally, yeah. normally, that's cool, bro, that's fucking. Don't cool. do what I do. <laughs> normally, normally, I would disagree with that whole approach. But when it comes to Tesla, I think you're buying almost like an index fund because you're buying so yeah. many industries that come along with it yeah. that it makes sense. It's literally buying a battery company. It's buying a, a, an automobile company. It's buying an energy infrastructure place. An so, AI company, right? Yeah, uh, an, an AI Uber, company. Uber. 
Yeah, a software company. So if you think about it, you're getting a pretty balanced portfolio by investing in one company that you know is being very well run. So most of the time, I, I disagree with people who want to go all in on one stock. But with Tesla, it's not not such a Wait, so far as odd, when it went to 100 bucks in January, were you like panicking a little bit or you were still just keeping your cool and you were like you'll be fine i mean i wasn't i wasn't panicking i mean it, it definitely hurts to see your you know your portfolio go down by 75 percent. you know you're like why wow, i'm such an idiot kind of thing you know you definitely have moments of doubt but then i also i think where i'm very fortunate is that back in when i was working at tesla you know 2017 2018 having been an investor since 20 since 2013 i mean i've seen the the insanity of holding the stock. What was different this time is that it, it was a severe drop that happened really quickly while te while Elon was buying Twitter, uh, and um, it and, and I had a platform where people would reach out to me, and basically I got to see how many people are really suffering from that stock drop because maybe they didn't position themselves in a way that they felt like, uh, you know, they, they underestimated the risk of holding the stock basically. And margin. So, are, are, and you, margin. are you selling exactly. a little bit though every year to, to fund your lifestyle or, or it's not nothing like that at all? You're just holding all the, the shit. The last time, yeah, the last time I sold was 21. I sold a little bit in 21. Okay. And then since then we haven't really touched it. Yeah. No. I mean, I'm, I'm not one of those guys where it's like, I'm gonna hold 100% of my stock forever. Is, you know, if my wife and I find a situation to, maybe move some a little bit like a single digit percent from the position and get into something else we will do it like we do that with real estate you know like that's the other thing that i do is like i have real estate locally here Smart. but uh from a stock perspective it's it's yeah it's all tesla but yeah awesome so if, if it just on as uh just to pick up from what you said before if you ever do get in touch with uh drew Dixon, sorry not financial it. advice <laughs> I have of to course say the whole Go thing ahead. is not financial <laughs> advice if you ever do get in touch with Drew Dixon and you wanted to have someone moderate a debate between the two of you guys so that you could focus on just making your points, I think all the guys here would love to would to, to host that. Just I appreciate that. that. Oh, Carlos, that's you. You got to take that up. That's all. I would I would love to. I'd love to like literally moderate it, ask the questions, and get the two sides of it, and, and do the follow ups with you know two minutes and responses and the whole thing. Um, okay, that. so I have a silly question, and then I'm going to ask the question that I think everybody wants to know. Okay, so the okay. silly question is. Does your wife call you producer husband? <laughs> Dude, I call my wife. I call my wife producer wife now. I started. Too. You are. The, you, you are the I started using that too. Yeah. Like what yeah. the fuck? These motherfuckers started on my movie? shit. <laughs> <laughs> what did she call? Uh, you? Called, is it saying she, it on your license? Like a producer? No, no, like, no, she calls me daddy. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> definitely not. Definitely, definitely not. No, she. Uh, she calls me. Uh, yeah, she just calls me babe. I mean, you know, she. Uh, yeah, just babe. I think I think it's funny because um, with her, it was like, as I called the producer wife, the like the very first time. And then after the stream, I'm like, did you like did that? Like, are you OK with that? She's like, yeah, why would I care? I'm your producer and I'm your well, wife. What do you I say to people on Twitter who give you so much shit? Oh, when I, yeah, you got I don't know why they you, say that shit, but they like, get you know what I say? You know what I say? Shut the fuck up. There we go. You don't know my life. It's because they don't have Shut a producer the wife. Yeah, it's none of your fucking business what it's I call my own button. wife. And it's none of your business how she feels around the name. Bro, it's the weirdest shit when That's people it. would say, I'm like, what? Yeah. I'm like, him and his wife have a beautiful relationship doing YouTube together. Yeah. And you're trying to fucking make an issue. Listen, my, I have, my I have wife, thoughts. I have, is she yeah. actually your producer, though? Is this true? Yeah, she is. Yeah. 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 So is mine. Mine gets me the drinks anytime she wakes me up for the podcast. He calls anytime her, he I need call, to. Chris calls his bartender wife. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I'm so lucky. I mean, dude, she's she's killer. I mean, she's not just uh, great from the perspective of producing, but she's just she's been so supportive through this whole like, you know, pet project of mine that, you know, started as a hobby. And now it's sort of morphed into something that's it's a business now, right? It's rewarding. It's it is. It's a legitimate source of income. And it's uh, it's something that I absolutely love doing. Every it doesn't feel real. Like my life doesn't feel real, and that's what I'm most grateful about is that I, I get to experience something that I, I feel like so few people get to experience, and I count my blessings every single morning. And for every second that I spend complaining, I try to punch myself in the face because I have no right to do that. Because I literally you get live to create the content. Uh, you get to create content on the internet. You get to peek through a little bit of the crazy noise that exists on YouTube, social media, et cetera. And you get to have an opinion and you get people to actually get, that's a, that's a really beautiful life. I think you it's insane. Say. Independently. And I'm not, I'm bound to myself. I don't have to, I, I say whatever I 
I like like the craziest thing that I've realized doing this YouTube thing is like, why aren't more people on networks independent? Like, why does MSNBC have talking heads? Why does Fox have talking heads? Why does CNN? Ha why does anybody have talking heads? Just go independent. Like, what are you waiting for? You just need a camera well, and a good microphone. You saw the success you know? of Megyn Kelly, Tucker Carlson. You'll see. I mean, exactly. I, I think Don Lemon, Don Lemon should do the same thing. All these people. They All should, these guys would kill it. This. Even like yeah. Rachel Maddow, as much as I like might not All agree with everything she says, it'd be great if she had a platform. Yeah. Um, so now I want to ask you the question that I think this is like the question that everybody. Wait, wait, wants. before, before Carlos, before you go there, I just want to say one thing. I think the reason why some of them don't do it is because they actually aren't of, not of substance. They literally yeah. just talking heads. They follow a script yeah. and that's all they're really yeah. there for. They got mics there's in very, the ears, radios in the there's, ears. Yeah, yeah there's true. very few true. people that can actually craft and articulate a viewpoint and make everyone say, yeah, you know what? I didn't think of it that way. Other people are just like good at reading off of a teleprompter. So And I win the some... click. YouTube, you got to win yeah. the click. If CNN yeah. broadcasts you... Yeah. You're not winning. And winning the click Far is fucking hard. Farzad that's, is hard. I, I watch yeah. Farzad. I watch your videos. And I think we did an interview last time. I said, you know what? You bring a different level of perspective into this that makes people want to be engaged with it, right? It's not just, hey, Tesla's doing this today and Tesla's doing that tomorrow. No, you're actually introspectively looking at some of the some of the things that they're doing, you know, giving your opinions on it. And a lot of times I, I don't see that with other people. So I think whatever following that you have cultivated, and especially thanks to your wife helping you produce it, I think it's something that's to behold. And actually, I think this is only a beginning. I think you're going to go much further um, in the future with it, man. And hopefully, hopefully you'll come man. back on and join us because we want to go further of with what course. we're doing too.